My name is Vivian Russo, and uh, my age is 85. I was 85 December uh, 20th, 2013. So far, so good. Had a little problem last year with an operation. With the grace of God, it went well. And now I can walk again with no pain, which is a blessing. And I'm very appreciative of that, you know. So I could live alone, take care of myself, cleaning, cooking, shopping, visiting, social outings. It's, a, it's been good year. Yeah. What would you say is the biggest contributing factor to your well-being? Well, I think that goes way, way back. You don't decide at 80 years old, well, I think I'll eat right and exercise so I can live longer and healthy. That has to start when you're very young. Like I said once before, like a building. A good building foundation starts small. If it has a bad foundation, no matter what you put on top of it, it'll never be a sound, stable foundation. You know. And uh, when we were younger, there wasn't much luxury money for cakes and candies and ice cream. We ba basically ate basic, healthy food. Uh, not that much meat, little fish, vegetables, fruit. And we always got plenty of sleep. I have to throw that in. I think people are missing sleep, which is a very, very important element in the well-being of a person. Until today, I'm pretty good. There's days that uh, I don't sleep through the night and exercise. What kind of exercise do you do? Oh, a lot of bending and twisting and always walking, walking and walking. And more so now after I retired, and uh, in the last 10 years since I gave up the car, I, everything I do, I walk. Library, post office, uh, local food market, visiting friends in the neighborhood. I remembered from our former conversations uh, things like brewer's yeast. Can you tell me about how you use that and why you use it? And that? another thing, I think only, what, the last 20, 25 years doctors are talking about vitamins. I've been taking vitamins for 50 years, from when I was about 30, so that's 55 years now. And I think he was the only doctor who ever talked about vitamins. A lot of my friends, they didn't even know what I was talking about if I brought up the subject. And Brewer's Yeast, through a, a booklet I read, and he recommended it, and I tried it, and uh, it suits me fine. I feel it gives me extra energy, it keeps me going. And occasionally, if I don't take it, or say later, later in the day, I feel that I feel tired in the afternoon, where normally I don't. You take it every day. How do you take it? What's uh, your concoction? A teaspoon, a teaspoon with um, some kind of liquid, either orange juice or plain water or Snapple, and um, well, what a half a glass of water and a teaspoon of that. Yeah, for me, I find it be beneficial. And, and you take that in addition with other vitamins? Oh, yes, yes, yes. What is your vitamin regimen? Oh, you want the whole list? <laughs> oh, 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 there's vitamin E, there's vitamin C. Vitamin D is very, very important. They're only talking about that in the last five, ten years, more so. And um, omega-3, um, let me see. Oh, I don't know. I can't think of all of them right now, but there's, there's a few of them, yeah. And do you drink a lot of water throughout the day? I, I think I should drink more, but just recently I read, because I do drink coffee, and four, about four, four or five cups a day, and at one time they said that don't count. Now I just got another little booklet on nutrition, and they said you could count it. So if that's the case, I drink my eight glasses of water a day. If it's not, then I drink maybe four or five. Now, big glasses, like really eight ounces, maybe even smaller. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Six ounces. How long have you been um, a widow? Uh, this year will be 12 years. After being with somebody for so many years and then they go, like it's, it really changes your day to day? Oh, sure, sure, sure. You know, uh, everything you do is different. You know, you always plan for two, two. Now it's, you got to think in terms of one, and how would it feel doing one, you know. At the beginning, you, you shy away from many, many things, you know. You don't feel you fit in, but uh, you get over that soon enough when you're alone too long. You know? 
Well, you're a very outgoing person. Well, and I you're... always had a lot of friends. So, it, and, and they're widows also, so that's easy. That part is easy. You keep each other company, you find things to do, movies, lunch, just walk, go shopping, you know. And, uh, and then gradually you overcome the whole idea that you're alone. Like this is your new way of life, period, amen. This is it. No, you can't won't. change it. Right. And I think when you find that community of like, similar characteristics in, in friends, you form your own community, and it, yeah. and it could it be a out. support works, system, yes, too. Yeah. And, you, and you join clubs. I belong to the civic organization in the neighborhood, and the AARP. We have our monthly meetings, and we have a lot of outings and luncheons. That helps a lot. That's great. And then I have many friends from the various jobs I had, and then by living in the neighborhood 41 years, the, the ones that didn't move away, I still have friends right in the local neighborhood, you know? Yeah. That's great. Well, we talked a little bit earlier about how important it is for, for anybody, really, of any age to sort of put, put their, their selves in order. Put their, can you speak about just the, why that's important, just for your mental well-being? Yeah. And really, not so much for me as who I leave behind to have the responsibility of cleaning up after me. It would be that much more difficult with all the right papers and uh, for the next person to know where everything is. And if you have insurance, if you have any um, IRAs and banks, they should know all of this. Yeah. If, they, if you don't, it's going to be that much harder on that individual. Right. Much, much harder. For legal reasons, with, oh, with property. Be, yeah, and yeah, sure, yeah. sure. Think about it. If they're... You know what it is? Some people think if you talk about it, you're going to die tomorrow. Yeah. Very foolish. Just like years ago, people didn't get insurance. The old, old timers. I don't know today. The old, old timers, they never had insurance because they, they feel that you would want to kill them to get their little five dollars, you know? <laughs> so they, they did not believe in insurance. Yeah, I think it's, it's, um, it's something that everybody needs to be... A uh, accountable for and responsible for in the same way that you there are certain things that you're required to do like pay taxes this is also s sort of falls in that same um, category because especially if you're a parent you you want to be able to ensure that your child knows what to do and it, it's, it doesn't have to be morbid it, 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 it's no not at all not at all it's a continued way of life for the next person. Yeah. And that information is very, very basic. Yeah. Is there anything that that you would tell, like some of your friends, uh, people your own age, or people like myself, whom I'm, I'm a little bit younger than you, but I'm also looking at, you know, how much my, my body, the mechanics, and any advice in terms of, you know, how to how to age well. Well, I think exercise is very important, one form or another, whether it's aerobics, whether it's even just walking or swimming. But the body has to keep moving, otherwise it gets like rusty, stagnant, then it gets more difficult to move. And good sleep is another basic, very, very important. Yeah. And, and the diet as well. Yeah, that was coming next, yeah. yeah. What you eat, what you put inside your body makes a big difference. Yeah. You eat all the wrong foods, you're going to be, maybe you won't die, but you'll be very sickly yeah. with this ailment or that ailment or the other ailment, yeah. you know? You don't eat too much processed foods? Or no. do you have anything in your diet that is like a weakness, like sweets? Or, or how do you oh, satisfy? You mean, you mean like cravings? Yes. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. Chocolate and ice cream. Yeah, I can't keep too much of that in the house. But I do measure it. First of all, I can never buy like a, those gallons of ice cream. Forget it. Forget it. Yeah. So I buy the little um, Klondikes. What, they're like a four? I could cut that in four and make four days out of it. See, I don't cut it out completely, but I, so my girlfriend says, what are you, crazy? She says, eat the whole thing and don't eat the next couple of days. I says, no, I'd rather have a little bit every day, you know. That's wonderful, like everything in moderation. Exactly, exactly. I like that. That's, yeah. a, that's a good strategy. And I can't keep a big box of chocolate in the house, but I'll buy like a little bag of Hershey Kisses. And again, 
if I have the ice cream, sometimes I don't have the Hershey's. Yeah. I'll have one dessert or the other. Yeah. There's some days that I just can't keep away, but that don't happen too often. Good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I see a lot of houses, they have like a board that they, with the wheelchair instead of going up and down stairs and all that. Yes, yeah, some houses around here have made changes on the outside, so I'm sure they made changes on the inside. You have stairs and you're... My friend, they put in one of those chairs that go up and down like an elevator. Yeah. So if, if that day ever came, I mean, see, you, what's, what's lovely about the way you've kept up with your well-being, your physical well-being, is by taking care of yourself, you've actually I think so. I think added so. life to your see, life. And let's put it this way, earlier I wasn't aware, but as you get older, I'd say you have to 30, 35, you know, of health and how to help yourself. A, a lot of my books and magazines, everything is on health and nutrition, what's good, what's bad, don't overdo this, you know, a little bit is, you know, so uh, that, that's important. Mm -hmm. Health and nutrition go together. That's great. That's the number one key to aging well. It's and exercise has to go with that. Yeah. That's great. Well, but and I know, I would say heritage, but you know what? <laughs> my father was only sixty-one when he died, and my mother was seventy-four. So you've outlived the well, age yeah. that yeah. your your parents. And my brother Anthony was uh, seventy. Muriel was sixty-nine. So I don't know what happened. I guess the shorter you are, the better you live. I don't know. <laughs> There's not that much footage to take care of. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. That's great. Well, I, I really think it goes back to uh, how you took care of yourself, if I recall correctly. Muriel was, was a beautiful woman, but she was a little bit heavier than you. And she loved her sweets. Yeah. And so, again, it goes back to the processed foods, if you eat too much of, of those, yeah. those treats. No, I don't eat frozen foods. I don't get those dinners that are already prepared, you know, like... I'm sure like a lot of people that live alone may do. I don't know. They may. you know. Or even sometimes when people go on Weight Watchers, they have all those meals. But, but that all has extra, extra salt in it. Yeah. Sodium, sodium, sodium. You yeah. know. And most of the vegetables are either frozen or fresh, which is important also, you know, not processed. Do you eat kale by any chance? No. But I eat spinach and broccoli and romaine lettuce, which is the greens. And dandelion, that's all green. That's all green, yes. Yeah. No, I never got used to kale. I've, I've had it once or twice by Andrea, but I can't say, well, I bought it once, and that's it.